Hello, Cecil Weeks here again, and welcome to another edition of Cecil in the City. Um, I've been making these videos lately to basically give a lot of pointers and guides uh, to uh, helping you find your next apartment in Manhattan or Brooklyn uh, very quickly. Um, and the topic I wanted to uh, discuss today is basically uh, I wanted to give pointers on how to search for an apartment uh, while using a broker. Um, and so I start off just by uh, running through the rental process, which many of you probably have already been through before. Um, I know a lot of you are spending lots of time on Craigslist and New York Times and Hot Pads and Naked Apartments and all these uh, various other websites that, uh, that brokers use as a tool to uh, get advertisements out to you, the uh, end user or the tenant. Um, anyway, um, a lot of you are you're spending time looking at hundreds and hundreds of ads, um, just going by pictures and, and sitting on emails and making phone calls to various brokers just to see if the apartment is available or not. And I'm sure you're finding by now, and even if you aren't, I can tell you, 99% um, of the ads out there are either not available or fake or, or in some way aren't the apartment that you're going to see. Um, and many of you are probably getting tired of that whole process and actually that's the whole point of this YouTube channel is to get you to the finish line faster and without being annoyed and, and frustrated. So you know, you're spending this time out there looking at hundreds of ads, calling hundreds of different brokers and, and most of you have full-time jobs. Uh, and I'm here to tell you that you should, you know, if you're going to end up having to pay a fee anywhere, or even if you're not going to pay a fee, but you're going to end up searching for an apartment and using a broker anyway, you might as well find a good broker that you trust. Let him do that process for you and, uh, and move on from there. Um, I, I'm not sure many of you know this. Uh, many people have a lot of confusion about the ads they see online, but every broker in this city has access to all of the very same apartments. Um, theoretically, there is no such thing as an exclusive. And uh, you may think that is a, a misnomer, but let me explain it. Um, I personally uh, will give an example of one of my, my, my exclusives. I have an exclusive on a studio. Uh, it's $1,900, just so you know, in Chelsea. Um, and just because it is my exclusive uh, doesn't mean that other brokers can't show it. I, in fact, rely on other brokers to find my ad and show it to their clients. It's my way of renting it. By exclusive, it just means that the owner of the apartment has listed it with me to then advertise out to everyone, you, the end user, and other brokers. So even though it's my exclusive, your broker can show my apartment. It just means that no matter what happens, uh, this apartment may, has to rent through me. So it's an exclusive, but I, in fact, uh, rely on and encourage other brokers to bring clients by. Um, it's probably going to be the way I end up leasing it. So that's just one example and, and to prove the point of how every broker has access to the same things. And to the next point, those ads that you see online on Craigslist and New York Times, um, neither me or any other broker really ever actually have strong ties to that apartment. It is not our apartment exclusively to list or to advertise. It is just an apartment that we spotted and noticed was a good deal, had, was very photogenic, um, was able to you know, photograph well, or had a great, phenomenal price. So when you see an ad on uh, the New York Times or Craigslist, it is not as though no matter what happens, that apartment will rent through me, it will rent through any broker. It just means that I spotted it and decided, wow, this is a good deal, let me go ahead and list it. Um, which is one of the reasons why you'll meet with brokers or call brokers, and they never really want to show you just one apartment. There's no way a tie to that apartment. It is not very beneficial or an efficient use of your time or the broker's time to make the trip out to see just that one apartment. You'll always get questions like, what are you looking for, what's your price range, and all that, even though you called for one ad, because it is in um, both parties' best interest to see more than one apartment in an appointment. Um, so that being said, uh, let me guide you towards to remove, taking your search offline. Um, like I said earlier, you need to go ahead and, and, and pinpoint and find a broker that you trust uh, and, and allow that broker to end your search online and show you what actually does exist. So, you know, once again, 99% of the ads that you're going to be clicking on and responding to, they don't actually truly exist or, or they're not currently available. If I spot a good deal and it happens to be the cheapest one bedroom in a dormant building, that apartment's going to probably end up leasing very quickly before I even have time to go back on there and edit my ad or find something else to, to advertise. So once you've found a good broker, you might as well end, this, end the internet search and start allowing that broker to then go back to the same buildings and find out for you while you're working full time what actually exists and what to take you to. Um, and the next point I wanted to bring up is that um, you may not know this, but in, in Manhattan, it, it is really hard to find an apartment, especially if you're looking in areas like the West Village, Chelsea, or you know, other, other downtown areas that are the, the hottest areas. Um, you might as well treat the rental search as if you're buying. And that, again, goes back to trusting your broker. Um, 
you can expect to find the apartment that you're going to want to take and lease with that very first appointment. That first appointment is a feeler between you and your broker. Um, you're going to see a couple things. Your broker will, at least I do, gauge your reaction to the apartment you see and then fine-tune the list for the second and third appointment. And that's the next point. It is very important that if your broker is pushing it, if he is a good broker, um, some brokers will only meet you once and then you never hear, hear from them back again. If the broker is following up on you, but you didn't see anything you liked on the first day, just remember, the broker never had a chance to meet with you and hear what you do and don't like, and hear what kind of features in the apartment you're looking at and like and don't like. Um, so it's, the second appointment is key. Um, after you've told your broker, even though you may not have even realized this before going out to see apartments, you either don't like parquet floors, or you don't like a certain type of light fixture, or you only want tile in the bathroom, you don't want linoleum. Um, it's very important that the broker hears that on the first appointment and then can fine tune what needs to be shown on the second and third. Uh, and that all encompasses back into the point um, about treating the rental process like, uh, like you're buying. Uh, if you're buying an apartment, I'm sure you don't go out and choose a broker and see five apartments with them, fire that broker, get another one, start over from scratch with him hearing what you like, you know, see five appointments with that broker, fire him, go to the second, third, fourth broker. Every single appointment you have is a different broker. In the rental process, uh, people tend to do that a lot, and that's not what you should do. You need to treat it like you're buying. Use one broker and see 30 apartments with that broker because each appointment gets you closer to the finish line. Rather than starting over every single time with the new ad that you just happen to call and using a new broker, you see only one or two apartments or maybe even five, and then you fire them and go to the next one. No. Stick with a broker that you trust, that you like, not just anyone, you know, not the first one you call, but when you finally find somebody you vibe with doing the appointment, go out on the second appointment. Um, you'll, do, you'll be doing yourself a favor. Um, and again, once you have found that broker, it is best that you then let that broker do his job. Don't keep searching online and keep contacting these other brokers about these fake apartments you're constantly seeing and then going to the broker you are using and say, well, what about this? What about this? Because I guarantee you, you can email your broker all these links to the things you're seeing and since 9 out of 10 of them will be fake, he will respond saying, he or she will respond saying, yeah, that's not real, that's not real, that's the Caledonia. No, they don't have one bedrooms for 2600 Those one bedrooms are $5,000. That's a false ad. Um, once you found the broker you trust in the online search, at least until you decided that you do want to fire that broker and find another one. So in the online search, once you found somebody you trust. Um, and once you finally start meeting with brokers, um, again, my whole point of making this video, uh, this video series, is to um, have people then start trusting their brokers a little bit more and, and actually get rid of the bad name that we have. So once you finally start meeting with your broker, be nice, honest, and open with your broker. Let your guard down. If the broker, every time you react neg negatively to an apartment, is actually agreeing with you, rather than trying to keep selling you on an apartment, you've already said you don't like this or that, the parquet floors, the lights. If he's agreeing with you and saying, let's move on to the next place, that's probably a broker you can trust. If the broker, after you've already told him you don't like it, is still trying to sell you, then maybe you do want to move on. But once you've found a broker that, that makes you feel a little bit easy, um, and ha is, is agreeing with you on things rather than trying to butt heads or sell you on every single apartment he takes you to, uh, it's okay to then start letting your guard down and be nice, honest, and open with your broker because the relationship and your experience with the uh, apartment hunting um, process will be much more pleasant. You'll start to love your broker and start wanting to recommend uh, your broker to other uh, friends. Um, and that's a, another key point. Um, a lot of the brokers are working for the immediate cast, the immediate deal, whereas you can kind of tell with a broker like myself is not working just to lease you that apartment and then forget about you. Um, me personally, when I work, I work for referrals. So that means I want to make sure you're happy with the apartment. I want to make sure the building in, it's in is great. I want to make sure that once you put your name on a dotted line, you're still happy once you moved in. I will tell you that I work for referrals and not just for your immediate deal. And that's the kind of vibe you should get from your broker. It's not that immediate, I want you to sign the dotted line and pay me your broker fee or, or so I can get paid by the landlord when it's no fee. I want you to find an apartment you like and have a great experience throughout your entire lease term. And that is the vibe, or even verbally, you know, if it's verbally communicated, that is something you want to find in a broker. Um, so anyway, the last part I, should, I would... Uh, advise you to do is once you've found your apartment with, with the uh, broker you trust, it's actually always best that you know, the next time you're looking, you look up the same broker. You already went through the process. You already spent time finding him. 
you've already went through all the ads, you already found something you like with them at the end, uh, it's best that you go ahead and pick up the phone when the next time you want to move, call the same broker. And if you're moving into an area um, that he doesn't, uh, or he or she doesn't necessarily work in, you know, a lot and doesn't know a lot about, um, if he was a good broker, he'll tell you. Uh, it's, it's something that will be communicated. You're, you know, I, I helped you move to the Upper East Side, but now you want to move to Chelsea. I may tell you, hey, listen, the next time you call me the next year, two years later, um, you know what, Chelsea's not my expertise. Let me take you out there one or two days, but if you don't find something, I can recommend a friend to you. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. I think you should walk away with this knowing that, you know, you're, uh, you're best finding a broker you trust rather than spending your time online constantly sifting through the ads and sifting through the fake and the and the misleading and you know all the all the dirty stuff that's out there find a good broker and in your online search and and, and make him earn his fee his or her fee okay um, anyway I think that's it I think you get the point um, and until the next video have a nice day and you can contact me at 832-704-3657 um, and uh, happy hunting